We would like to acknowledge the land on which we gather is the occupied territory of the Iowa, Sauk, and Meskwaki, Wahpeton, and Sioux people. I teach in the graphic technology program here at UNI. Uh, my area is printing. Uh, we teach the graphic communication industry. So, so anything, how, how we communicate through graphics and how we put images on things, right? And, and within our program, we teach a lot of the management uh, of the production workflow within the industry. What is most important about Fort Upon Iowa when we're thinking about what we're going to do with these images is that high quality scanning, right? The high quality scanning means we can do anything with them, the high quality printing, right? So um, these images, and, and as I glance through a few of the images, they are scanned incredibly high quality, right? And, and as we look at quality of scanning, it really comes down to that print size, right? And, and what we can do with the print and, and the size of the print. So when I take a photo into Photoshop and I look at the original size image here of 104.5 megabytes here, it is a six by four image at 2000 pixels per inch. Well, when we start resizing that, not resampling, resizing the image, and if we're gonna to go to an eight by 10 size, we're still at 1100 pixels per inch. Uh, from a print standpoint, that's, that's even overkill, right? We're only gonna print up to 300 pixels per inch uh, and the rest of them will, will be eliminated. So um, this one image that came in at six by four, I could get all the way up to 25 by 36 at 300 pixels per inch. So the quality of these images are just unbelievable when we're talking from a print standpoint and the ability to to output that printed piece. Um, so what can we do with those? And it's really anything under the sun, anything that we can put images on. Um, in, in just a quick demonstration here, we have a lot of different things from bookmarks to stickers, posters, signage. If we wanted to do a billboard, uh, billboards are actually printed at a lower quality, but from a demonstration standpoint, we could take these images all the way up to billboard size. But it's not just limited to paper, right? With the, the dye sublimation is a process where we can put images on a lot of different process, uh, substrates. So coffee mugs, these, these, uh, Coffee mugs here and the ability to print directly onto the coffee mug is an example of how we could, could do these in the print standpoint. You know, light street poles, buttons, t-shirts, once again on the book side there. This is an example of what we did in downtown Cedar Falls at Miss Wonderful. We took a few of the images and uh, you'll learn about wheat pasting here in a minute here. Uh, this, these, are, these are printed vinyl. So these are, these are gonna be the more permanent uh, features within the images here. So these are printed on vinyl and they're laminated. They'll last 10 years outside in the sunlight before you'll start seeing any deterioration of the images there. Uh, but the ability to print and then have that high quality print, you can get up close and it's gonna be a, a nice crisp, clear, non-pixelated image. And then the non-linear cuts around the individuals there. This is a project here that our senior design group is currently working on for Waverly and Bettina might, might have a little bit more information on that, on this than I do. Um, but we are taking and developing a, uh, like a kiosk here where we can learn about a specific area. And the students are in the process of developing this frame. Uh, and then my part is to take those images and we are printing them onto metal prints. Um, and then as they turn the image around, we'll be able to see some information regarding the backside of it. And once again, it, it's really endless as far as what we can print on and what we can do. Some of the fun projects we had for an event here is to do some cardboard cutouts. So we, uh, we these were actually made of wood, but we printed onto um, a vinyl material once again, and then applied it to, to some, some boards, uh, cut out the faces of those boards, and then uh, you know, had some fun photo ops for individuals uh, in downtown Cedar Falls. Wheat pasting is a, a 
ephemeral form of public art where images are printed onto paper and then assembled like a puzzle uh, by gluing them to the wall and creating this, uh, this image. So they're printed on long rolls and then uh, layered one on top of the other. And it's really about getting images out of the archive, off of the computer, off of digital devices and, and putting them out in really creative ways uh, on surfaces in communities. And it's so much fun uh, to put these up and to organize uh, groups to help install them and design them. And here you can see us putting up one in Cedar Falls that we did with a local donor holding a birthday cake. And there she is. Her name is Shirley Dean. And uh, this was a picture that was taken uh, when she was a young girl for her birthday. And and we decided to wheat paste her up as, as part of uh, a celebration. So we had a really, really fun time. The nature of these is that they can be organized relatively quickly and, and put up for certain events uh, as a way to get art in the community around uh, some kind of a celebration or just to, to transform mundane spaces into things that are beautiful. Uh, this is a collage I did in, in Coralville. I was working with the Coralville Public Library this summer to do a series uh, for their sesquicentennial. And this was the first color wheat pasting actually I did. And you can kind of see where it takes some old archival photos and then fades uh, into this beautiful, vibrant uh, collage of, of images from their food pantry that they've got there. But uh, the application of, of historic photos in historic places can, can bring up new different conversations about identity and, and history or where things happened in the community. So this is right by uh, the river at the Iowa River Power Restaurant. This photo was taken very close to that location uh, quite a while ago. This was another piece I did with the Burlington Library, which was a uh, a public interest piece to celebrate their history and the new initiatives moving forward for the library to kind of pay uh, tribute to the people before them and and the people that organized the library and and really start conversations that the library wanted to implement in their community about the importance and, and the um, vibrance of the library and what it does for the community. Saving these images and scanning them again at high resolution, which allows us to do huge murals like this one I did in Honduras, um, is just another application of why saving these photos is so important so that we can create collages, we can tell stories, we can get people involved, we can have a much more diverse and exciting view of the past. But for me personally, it's really about bringing people together around the images to do something. I think that's one thing that Wheat Pasting does really well as a, a community activation. It's something that anybody can be involved with. You can get kids involved, you can get uh, adults, elderly involved. Uh, it's something that's really fun and they take a lot of ownership, not just because they help build it, but because those images, those historic images are part of their community and their story. Our most recent project really was this summer with wheat pasting with Fort Upon Iowa. We worked with Ragbri, so you saw that, that projection. We also did wheat pastings in the overnight towns. And this again was on the same idea of getting images out into the community in unique spaces, uh, making art accessible and, and uh, training volunteers to help make an impact for uh, you know, the tens of thousands of visitors that, that came into their community. I'm a big fan of conversation series. And we did this at Cedar Falls Public Library where we picked four topics. As you can see on the left, we had a whole series and it was once a month, tackled mid-century design. And we had a woman named Anne Eastman. She's an expert in mid-century design. And so she picked her favorite images of kitchens and the furniture that we have all across the archive and talked about uh, what mid-century design really is and how it is evident through the Fortifana, Iowa collection. 
We were talking about fish earlier and we had some fish experts come from the DNR. He was great. And he just talked about the history of fishing through Fortifon Iowa photos. And it was amazing. You all met Anne Olson from um, talking about 19th century fashion and dating. She's marvelous. And so she put together a really great 19th century fashion conversation series. And, and Jim Volgarino, who was also part of our dating conversation. And you use the resources of the people in your community. And, and we have discovered all these incredible experts and the conversations about cars was hilarious. We had a bunch of guys who are really into cars show up and they were arguing over what kind of Pontiac this car on Fort Upon Iowa was. And to me, it was just like, it was so golden. It was such a golden moment. We just loved um, just the energy and, and people's pride in their own expertise um, that this conversation brought. It was a, a lot of fun. We are also seeing through some um, things that are happening with professors at UNI, some theater performances that are stimulated by um, the historical photos that are evident in Fort Upon Iowa. So it's a rich resource for costuming. It's a rich re resource for for storytelling and for projecting during a theater per performance. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is that we have been using Fort Upon Iowa images to stimulate conversations with people who have dementia. There is a practice called creative care. This cooperative portal is a brilliant tool. It turns out Fort Upon Iowa is a brilliant tool for family members to trigger memories and also to inspire playful and happy conversations in general that can be uplifting for everyone when you have someone in your family who has um, dementia. The whole point of creative care is to find ways to inspire conversation that bring dignity to the people who have dementia. So many of the images in Fort Upon Iowa connect uh, meaningfully to people because they are offering experiences that are culturally similar to things that people have lived through in certain periods. And so they're just a really important way to build community and family as well.